Hello, hello, this is Davin with GitLab doing a quick video on the GitLab runner and specifically the Docker executor. Going to be using 11.11.2 for both the GitLab instance and the runner. As a quick note on that, we do recommend that you keep the major versions in sync as it can lead to unexpected problems and incompatibilities. So I've got my admin on the right and a blank project here on the left. First step is going to be to register the runner. So go ahead and follow the prompts, and I'm going to copy and paste a lot of these from the registration page here, the token and the URL. We'll call this the Docker runner. I'm not going to use any tags. Here is where you specify the executor. We're going to use the default 2.1 Ruby image for our container, and now we're up and going. So let's go ahead and create a new file. There is a lot of great defaults you can use. I'm going to primarily use this just to get my file populated. So I'm just creating a really basic run container and output the Ruby version that's here. As a, While we're waiting for that to finish, I want to show you real quick. There's a lot of options for the runner, both environmental variables and uh, flags that you can add. So if you want to automate or want some specific settings when you're registering, you can do that. Also here on the right, you'll see that now that we've got my runner registered, you can see it populated the version, the name, and when it last contacted. Let's go take a look at the job. You can see here that we pulled in the 2.1 image and that we got the output here from the container. So let's say you don't want the 2.1 image. The config toml is kind of the brains of the GitLab runner. If you're making any changes, it's typically going to be in here. So specifically, we're going to change the image here to 2.5. And I want to show you real quick uh, the journal CTL. This is the runner logs, runner output. This file, the config toml, is loaded dynamically, so you don't need to restart the, the runner when you make changes. So you can see here, I saved that, and you can see the configuration reloaded here on the left, on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and re-trigger this job. And you can see now we've got our new 2.5 image and our now our new output. So this is a pretty basic example. Let's take a little bit more of a dive into the Docker and Docker world. So as soon as you start to get into building or running containers from within the Docker executor, there's a few things you want to take a look at and a few different approaches that you can go. So let's go ahead and edit this. I'm going to copy and paste this example here. This is using the Docker and Docker service container to manage and run uh, our containers. So this does require the privileged flag to be set. So I'm going to need to come in here and change this to true. Go ahead and hit save there and commit it. The Docker and Docker uh, service is used for a lot of the different tools that GitLab has built Auto DevOps, SAST, uh, Code Quality. A lot of these tools will use the Docker and Docker image, and so you'll need to have this both set up, configured, and the privilege flag on the runners that are using this. Let's jump to our job. All this job is really doing is running that Docker Hello World container. But you can see here we've got the service started. The, the job running and successful. So let's say you didn't want to use a privileged container. The other option is to use a Docker socket that you can mount directly into the container. So in that case, we won't be using the Docker service. And we'll also need to modify the config toml again. We'll switch this over to false. And then here we'll replace the volumes. Or just add two, that'll be easier. So the Docker socket is what the Docker daemon itself on your host uses to control and manage. So all Docker commands on the host are going to be interacting with this socket. So this is mounting that socket directly into the container. And then the Docker stable image will interact with it directly rather than the service that we were using before. So we'll go ahead and commit this. And take a look at our job. So 
same results. Difference is we don't have a privileged container uh, being run from the Docker runner. Again, though, if you're using any of the auto DevOps, SAS, or DAS tools, code quality, you may need to take a look at the D&D. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Let us know if you have any questions.